Hello, I'm Skid from the Widescreen Gaming Forum. Today I'm going to be giving you a look at Star Drive. Now, Star Drive is an action 4x game. Uh, it's along the same sort of lines as Sins of a Solar Empire, so rather than being turn-based, everything takes place in real time. Um, there's a couple of small exceptions to that, but I'll get to that. They're, they're not really that important, but as you can see, well, this menu is actually a bad example. Um, the background of this menu is stretched. This planet over here and this planet over here have actually spanned, they've been moved, but they're the right scale. So I think they're probably all images. So this is basically a spanned HUD rather than a 3D rendering. Now it picks up the resolution here without a problem, so you can just run it in that and run it in full screen mode. But other than that, there's very few graphical options. Um, which is, isn't too bad because of, the game doesn't really have a massive um, graphical overhead anyway, so most uh, smaller machines should be able to run this okay. Um, it does have mod support, although I've not actually looked into it. But this is basically the primary problem you'll come across with this game. The UI is spanned, but it's scaled correctly. So basically my monitors, my middle split is here for my right and here for my left which basically puts information all over the place. It makes it more cumbersome to use. Um, I've popped up open the um, start new game, but I'm actually going to load us into a game in a bit. Uh, there's five or eight different races. Um, for the most part, the only differences between them is the uh, construction of their ships uh, and their character images. Beyond that, you can customize everything. So you can change the empire name, you can change the race name, you can change the plural of the race name, you can change the home world, and you can also customize all of the attributes. Or I suppose they're more skill points. Um, so basically, you can use these points. If I, it's like, yeah, this one here, uh, the race I've picked or clicked on, which was these bear guys, um, they come with a savage trait, which gives them a 30% bonus in um, ground combat. And I can always cancel that because it takes two points and then pick something else that takes two points, like making them eagle-eyed, which makes them shoot faster. So you can customize your race prior to going into the game, uh, or you can just use one of the default archetypes. But, uh, actually there's a couple of other things. Um, some other things to note, the galaxy options are up here. Now, from what I can tell, galaxy size just or defines effectively the total size of the galaxy. Changing the galaxy size doesn't actually change the number of solar systems that are in the galaxy at all. It just makes, basically, if you keep the solar system or solar systems the same and increase the galaxy size, it will increase the distance between the stars. Uh, if you want there to be more stars or more, more systems, you have to change the solar system to abundant or crowded. And then you can also have them there. And then the rest of the options, like seven opponents, sandbox mode, which is the only mode in the game at the minute, Pacing is the speed at which the game ticks. Um, they call it turns, I'll get into that in a bit. Uh, difficulty is the difficulty of the AI. There's no multiplayer mode at the minute, but from what I remember, uh, the game's creator, which is basically just one dude, says that if he can get the single player nailed down so that it's effectively functional and it works fully, then so long as the game sells well, he will look into putting multiplayer in. Um, but the primary focus of the game is the single player and he wants to get the core experience down. Now the advanced options down here uh, gives you access to two different things. Uh, In-system FTL modifier basically restricts the speed your ships can warp in FTL while within the boundaries of a system. Um, planetary gravity well basically prevents warping at all within the, gra or within the gravity well of a planet. Now the game that I'm running has this set at 50, so speed in a or FTL in the system is 50% of what it would be out of system, and I have planet planetary gravity wells enabled. So we shall jump into that game, assuming it's still here. This might take a little bit of load. Now this game is reasonably well on its way. Um, probably, I know, three hours into it, but. I shall quickly update you on the situation in the galaxy. Ah. There we go. So, these blue stars are my systems. 
or they're systems I have planets on. And these brown ones are one of the hostile races. And well, I say hostile race, he actually he's got a lot more planets than I thought he had. Um, he is the only hostile race that I've come across. It's kind of my own fault. Um, we'll pop to the diplomat uh, diplomacy screen. These guys here. Now, what effectively happened was that I was focusing on expanding and I was trying to accelerate my growth to get to um, uh, the ability to create, I think it was covert sized ships. Um, covert is the wrong, corvette. Corvette sized ships. Because I put a negative buff on my race that makes fighters less efficient. Um, I think it's called Ponderous. Um, but yeah, because the fighters were less efficient, I didn't want to build any. So I was rushing my technology along so I could get to those to build them. And I bumped into him before I got to that point. The next thing that happened is just before I got to that point, he detected that my fleet was effectively zero and declared war on me. And by rights, he should have beaten me by now. Um, I basically had expanded to, I think, that's my home world. Oh, no, that's not my home world. No, that is my home world. My home world has been colonized by one of the other races. Cheeky bastard. Um, ah, agent training, I'll get to that in a bit. Um, but yeah, oh, where's the pause? Can I pause it from here? I can't pause it from here. No, sorry. Um, yeah, what happened was, I originally had these systems down here, I think this one, this one, and this one. And he immediately attacked and took this one with very little effort. Uh, by the time he had taken that, I had got my technology up to the point where I could um, fight back. So I rushed ship at, ships out. And I met him here and I held him off long enough to get a fleet to defend it, but I eventually lost this system. And then we went into a stalemate. And we was pushing back and forth between these two systems. Now, for most of the game, um, after that point, both my military strength, my population, and my scientific strength were third or fourth. And he, by far, should have been the strongest. Um, but he didn't press his advantage. So I was able to build back, and I'm now probably the strongest or, or the strongest race up on, the, or on the map at the minute. Now, what I think he did was he did something stupid and I think he declared war on all three factions because his military strength has been going down and I've engaged him very, very little. So I think he started war on multiple fronts and now he's paying dearly for it. Um, the other races have been relatively friendly because by the time I bumped into them, I got my um, military strength and scientific strength and population back up again. So they, or this guy here, respects me by the fact that I oh, I have a large military and this guy here is similar. Um, the AIs kind of play to the race's um, traits. So because um, uh, uh, this one here uh, basically is religious uh, with, a god, with a god of war. So because I'm declared war on here and I've been fighting them and I've been living and I have a large military, they both respect me. Uh, my end goal because this guy's been at war with me all game, I'm going to kill him and then try and create a um, federation with these guys. Now, the victory condition is basically you must um, wipe out. It applies in both um, diplomatic victory and in standard victory. You have to wipe out the other AI. Now, I don't think this will actually work in um, multiplayer because in order to do that, what you have to do, that's the wrong button, you basically have to propose joining the empires into a federation. And basically when you do that, their entire fleet and everything they own is then transferred to your control. So basically they surrender to you under friendly terms. Um, and then the other option is of course um, military victory and you effectively just defeat everyone. So the, my idea is to defeat him and then create a federation with those two and hopefully all will be peachy. Now, as you can see, um, well, you, you can't see, the game is in fact horizontal plus. Um, you can see the minimap down at the bottom, zoomed out all the way. I can see pretty much the entire left and right of the map just by looking at it. Now I have three fleets, this one, this one, and this one. And I was in the process, if I just highlight first fleet, which is here, and I want to warp him 
to here. Integrated system as well. Oh, that's good. I need that for battleships. Um, so just before I saved this, I completed research for... Uh, it's under space weaponry? No. Energy weaponry. I completed phaser research, which were basically upgrades to my laser cannons. So I'm in the process of retrofitting my ships. So this is basically the upgrade tree. Um, it's not particularly in depth, but there's a fair few technologies here to give you a choice of which direction you want to go down. Um, on personal preference, I actually prefer uh, the tech tree in Sword of the Stars, because that thing was massive and it was dynamic, which kind of meant that if you knew what was in the tree, you could try and build towards that, but you could end up not being able to get to the top tier because it wasn't in your tree which kind of screws you over a bit, but it forces you to adapt your strategies. Now, I've just finished Integrated System, which is this research here, um, which is basically, I think it's an engineer, it gives me Engineering Bay. Can I see that? There we go. Uh, Combat Information Center, which is basically an upgraded, um, oh, what do they call it? Cockpit or Command Center. And then Main Engineering, which is um, a power system. Now, the reason I got those was because I'm now researching battleship construction. And I'm hoping, if I time this video right, I will get to that at the end of the video, although I may not complete it. Because building ships is fairly in-depth, and we shall go into that now, but we shall be retrofitting existing ships. So, if I go to the shipyard, now I need to be retrofitting... Um, which ones are they? I need to retrofit cruisers, frigates, and coverts. So, in fact, I don't think I need to retrofit my covert. This is my small covert ship. This is a shield generator, two power cores, a cockpit, a combat engine, and a warp engine. And then these are ammunition stores and these are guns. So yeah, I don't need to upgrade these because these are actually um, standard um, ballistic cannons. And I've not been researching any ballistic weapons. I've been researching beam weapons. So I think... They're in an odd order. Let's see, does my rear support have it? No, that is not my support ship. Is it? I don't remember putting missiles on it. Ah, they're repair drone launchers. launchers. Yeah, I can't upgrade that one. I'll get there in a minute. Right, so definitely this one. Right, this is my main battle tap, or my main battle frigate. So this is the bridge. So that's basically an upgraded command center. If we come over to the left-hand side, all ships must have at least one of these. Yeah, that's what I thought it was too big. Um, either a cockpit, a bridge, or a command centre, but they must have some sort of command um, system. Also, all ships must have every single slot available filled with something in it. Now, as you can see, this ship doesn't have much in the way of armour. These things here are basically armour, and if somebody gets behind me, they're going to obliterate me because I don't have armour. However, these are highly advanced shield generators, they're ancient shield generators. I got these by effectively a random event. And they're more powerful than the standard version. And I've equipped this ship with two. So it will take a reasonable amount of firepower. But once these shields are gone, then they're just going to start tearing through the systems and they'll probably destroy the ship. It makes it cheaper, but it also makes it um, faster and more maneuverable. So it's... It's a trade-off. Um, I prefer to have, well, anybody that watches all of my videos know that typically in a RPG type game, I play mages, which are typically with glass cannons. So basically this is the same sort of thing. As you can see, it's heavily armed. So what I need to do is retrofit this. Now I've now got, it wasn't fusion beams, it should have been phasers. There we go, heavy mount phaser arrays. So these are the upgrade versions of those. So if we check the stats, Yep, basically this is a flat damage increase. And I'm selecting the wrong one. Yeah, significant ground damage increase. It's also increasing range as well. Yeah, so what we need to do is re-equip those and we also have energy cannons. Uh, no, sorry, not energy cannons, it's still beam weapons. There we go, light phase arrays and these ones actually rotate now. If I put these all on, 
bollocks. Put that there, that there. Right, now these weapons all have arcs of fire. Um, in some cases, like these ones here, because these are turreted based weapons, you can change the arc of fire. So you can point them in a different di direction and get these guys to fire behind us. But this is going to be primarily a front firing weapon, so it's going to try and keep the enemy directly in front of it. And that's what this option over here is. You can basically give the ships um, default behaviours um, when you construct them. So this one here will make sure that it will rotate so that forward firing weapons are facing the target. So it will always try and face forward, so it will try and face all of these weapons directly at it. Now that means there's no weapons at the back, which are what these are for. Uh, these are basically um, they're point defence laser cannons, so they don't do much damage against larger ships but they're good in case a smaller ship tries to sneak up behind me and tries to take me out from behind. So I just accidentally moved some of these, so let's just shift them back. Okay, now if I click arcs you can basically see those are the firing arcs and all the shield generators. So I've just upgraded this ship so I need to save it, which is now Mark IV. And I believe I need to do the same on the Nuka. This ship is less well armed for general combat, but it's more heavily armoured. The main purpose of this ship are these um, nuclear bombs. Uh, they're designed, or this ship is designed for planetary bombardments, and this is what my third fleet is primarily comprised of. Um, as long with, actually, along with support ships. My, my rear, or effectively, third fleet is the rear support ship or rear support fleet, I should say. I'll get there eventually. Anyway, so let's be quick about this, and that bollocks. Let's try that again. Helps if I click the right point. So we want to place that one there, that one there, that one there, that one there. I've not got anything else new, I don't think. Ah, I do. I have a... This one, isn't it? Yeah, this is a slightly more advanced arm. It's lighter, um, but effectively has 25% less health. So it's half the weight, but 25% less health, which is more efficient. So I'm actually sacrificing defense here to give it a bit more maneuverability. And I'm going to have to do the same on the other ship that I just finished redesigning. That's not a problem. So that is a Mark III Nuka. I'm not very good with names. I started reasonably well. I mean, this is called the Shrub because my race is basically a race of plant people. So I was kind of going up in scale of plants. But then I just gave up. So yeah, they're unoriginally named after this one. So we save that, overwrite. Okay, so now let's retrofit my cruisers. Uh, is it that one there? I think it is. Don't need to change my freighters because they don't have any weapons yet. So I think it's this one here. Yeah, this is my cruiser. Let me get rid of the arcs. This one has no reverse firing weapons, but it's armed all hell straightforward. So you get in front of this ship and it's going to really tear it apart, tear you apart. And that is exactly what it's designed for. So. Once again, we shall replace that, 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 that. I'll stop saying that now. There we go. And we also need to install these. This has even less health. Now, I don't have to click all of these individually. I can actually just click and drag, and it will place everything that it goes with the top of. So. Now these little things here are actually energy stores. Now the reason I have these is because when these lasers fire, they drain energy. So they can fire for longer if I have a, or if I'm either generating more power than they take to fire, which requires a lot of reactors. And these ones here, these little small ones, they're actually by far the best reactor I've got. Again, they're remnant technology, so they're ancient technology. They're about the equivalent of um, double the smaller version of these large ones. So when you originally start you get two power plants, you get a nuclear reactor which has 50, 
and then the medium nuclear reactor, which is this big one here that takes up four slots that has 250. So these small remnant ones, they take up one space, but are twice as powerful as a nuclear reactor. So it would take two and a half to be equivalent of these. So they're good for saving space, but they are very much more expensive. And as you can probably see, this has three shield generators directly in the front and then two on each side and then one at the back. So once again, this ship is pretty badly defended from the back. If somebody took this shield out, they could take the engines out. And if they did it right, they could also take out all of my power supply. So these lasers would be much less efficient, but then they would have to get behind this for long enough for it to be able to, be able to kill it. And this thing, again, can turn pretty quickly. Um, so and that's basically the design philosophy I've got in my ships. And this is basically how ships are designed. But as I said, I'll get to a more detailed version of that later, hopefully, if I've got the time. But what I need to do is retrofit my fleets. So, once those guys have walked over to this planet up here, are they there? Yep. So now first fleet is over there, what I need to do is go ships, ship list, and I want to, oops, wrong button. Uh, where is it? There it is. So, all of these, I want to, can I not retrofit them? Why can't I retrofit them? I did save the new designs, didn't I? The rank Mark IVs. That's bizarre. Sprouts. Oh no, Sprouts are an entirely different one. They're my very, very, very small ones. Um, so yeah, Nuke Mark I, I want to make it a Mark II and I want to retrof retrofit all, which will retrofit every ship in my fleet. And then I want to do... Thorns, they want to become... Nope, sorry, Thorns are my flagships. Shrubs. Make them Shrubs Mark IV, retrofit all. And then I need my nice big ships. Where are they? There they are. And retrofit those, retrofit all. So that should make all of my fleets start moving to... Um, the nearest planet for retrofitting. Yep, you can see these ships here, they're all going to be retrofitted. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, they just warped off. While I'm thinking about it, I need to make sure that I don't think they had any armor on them. They did not. And what about my slubs? No. Thorns. Yeah, they've got a bit of armour on them. We shall replace the armour on these as well, just so that all of the fleet's up to the same standard. Oop, nope, not load. And then I will need to go back to here. And then all thorns. Retrofit to Mark III. Now, next thing I need to do, I need to rebuild my fleets because Fleet 1 and 2 had these ships in them, the Mark II or Mark III's, and they need to be Mark IVs. Now, unfortunately, I've not been able to find a way to simply swap out these ships. Uh, designs. So they are frigate class ships, they. Oops. They're shrubs. So they want to now be Mark IV. Yeah. So yeah, I can't... I can't find a way. There might be a way, but yeah, I can't find it to effectively swap out these ships for different models. So in order to upgrade a fleet, what I've actually got to do is delete the existing ships and then replace them with their upgrade variants and then I will need to rebuild the fleet later. So something like that. And then same for these, they will be thorns I believe. Yep. Frigates. Yep, frigates. Thorns. One. 
two, three, four, five. But fortunately I only have to do this with one of my fleets because both fleets are effectively copies of each other. So once I've done this, what I can do is save the design of the fleet. This was second fleet, so yeah, we'll save that as second fleet. Now if I go have a look at first fleet, it's pretty much exactly the same. So I can load the design, I can load second fleet design, and now it's the same. And then I can save this as first fleet design. Now, while those ships go all do that, we shall have a look at my empire screen. So this is basically all of the planets within my empire. And again, the UI is spanned, so the information is all over the place. And it makes it kind of tricky to read it all. But it's not too bad on my monitor just because of how it splits it. This split here basically puts all of these information, which are the numbers that are important, um, just on my left-hand side monitor. So we'll go through them. The first number is population. The next number is the amount of food production or usage that the planet has. Uh, the one after that is effectively construction, how much construction points it's using or, or it's producing. Next is research, and then the next is um, tax income. Now I'm getting 14 income of tax, I've got a nice bank, um, and I've sent a whole bunch of ships to both this planet here, and then the other one, where is it? Oh, the ships haven't arrived yet. but. This is basically the construction going on. And this one here is producing six con or production points. I'm going to accelerate that a bit. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's retrofit them quickly. So I'll do that. So that should make it um, process a lot quicker. It's going to make it consume fuel or food from its stores. Basically, this line here is its food stores. There are 3,000 food units. And the game is paused. Why is the game paused? The game shouldn't be paused there. Ah, he's changed how it worked. Um, this screen didn't use to pause the game. Let me just find a button to unpause the game because otherwise my research is not going to finish. Oh, of course, there's no way to change key bindings. Okay, so we'll wait for these ships to get to here then. Basically, this is the other planet, and the reason I want these ships to get here is because this is where, or this planet here is where they're going to be retrofitted. So they should stop and disappear. Okay, now that they've stopped and disappeared, they should appear in this list here to be retrofitted, which they've not done because the planet in question is potentially building, yeah, ground units. There they are. Okay, so I can't send those to the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now the game's on pause, that's fine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we shall add the troops back in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one short. Okay, so on this planet as well, I shall maximize production, but I'm also gonna give it a hand. Um, I can use this here, which is basically production store, to accelerate the production and or upgrades of all of these by clicking, I think it's this button here. Yep, rush the production. This will actually cost me money as well. It'll cost me, each time I press it, we'll use uh, 10 production points and add it to the, or apply it to the particular process. Um, but if I do that, it will also then take 10 from my bank. And my money has just shot well up and it's shot well up because my fleet is now being repaired or retrofitted. So there's actually nothing there. So I will rush through as many of those as I can afford to rush through at the minute. I better make sure that this will produce food, otherwise it's going to run out, so I'll put it there. Good enough. Okay, and we shall quickly do a similar thing on my home world, but that will be quicker because it has a larger store. In fact, it's already done retrofitting. Holy shit. That was quicker than I expected it to be. Okay, if that's the case, then in theory, I should be able to go to my second fleet, which is wrongly named. I thought I say resave this design as first fleet. First fleet. Save. 
It's not save the name, bollocks. Okay, this button here is brilliant. Basically, as you can see here, this fleet is empty. These are all placeholders for where ships can be. Now, in order to populate this, I just need to click requisition and assign now. And basically it's taken every active ship I have and picked all of the ones that can be used in this fleet and then filled the positions for it. Now if I can't, or there were, if there wasn't enough ships to do that, then if I go for here, requ requisition, then I could click build now and it will build the remaining ships in this fleet and then send them to this fleet when it's done. So that makes managing fleets a hell of a lot easier than they will, are in a lot of other games. So I can just effectively design a fleet and then tell it to build and it will evenly distribute the construction between all of my planets and then when the ships come out they'll come to this or just go straight to the fleet and then you're done. Uh, that basically also makes um, ah, re or not resupplying but is it resupplying the right word? I'm zoomed way too far in. Um, resupplying is the wrong word. Um, I can't think of what the word is, but when ships effectively get destroyed. Now, why are you so far apart? That's my third fleet. I'm not sure why that fleet is sitting apart like that. Uh, my third fleet here is basically my support fleet. So we'll send them moving. Does it have all of its ships? It does not. Okay, in which case we shall build the remaining ships and they will get sent to them later. Uh, yeah, it's my my support and invasion fleet. Uh, invading actually can't be done through standard ships. Um, you saw me building troops. What you have to do is launch those troops into orbit and then send them either as a group or one by one to invade. Uh, and they basically get their own little ships. But that's how that works. So we shall fly fleet one straight down there. Now, what else? I thought I already acknowledged that. Never mind. So, yes, that's something I didn't say. Um, the game effectively refers to a lot of things as ticks. So if we go through here, um, I need to. Oh, turn, sorry. If a person has turn, there's 25 turns. Now, the game doesn't actually have turns. Um, a more common terminology is a tick. Basically, every five seconds, the game processes all of its um, internal data. So it will update things like your production, your research, your diplomacy. Any sort of like action that takes a period of time will be updated on a tick. And each, or each tick happens every five seconds. So that's basically how all of the background processes work. Now I'm training these um, agents. I've not actually used them in offensiveness because I've got a negative trait that makes all of my diplomatic actions have a negative side effect. But you can use these agents uh, to effectively infiltrate, assassinate, sabotage, steal technology, steal funds, or incite rebellions on your um, enemy's worlds. So if you're an underhanded kind of player, you can use these and in order to use these, you have to have agents. Now, you also have to have agents if you want to defend against this sort of attack. And you get agents just by buying them. So train new agents. It'll cost me 250 if I wanted to do that, which I'm not going to, because uh, I've got enough here. And then you just train them by clicking that. Now, this one here is level 10, which I believe is max. So he's basically doing all of my defending work. And I've been training these to try and get them up to a decent level as well. But because I have a 10% negative role on all diplomatic actions, a lot of my agents have been dying before they make it to level 10. Uh, because if you train them, they can have an accident which kills them. A training accident which kills them, which isn't particularly nice. Now hopefully I can get into some combat. Um, as I said, this guy's been at war with me for a while and I have every intention of absolutely destroying him. Now. I've considered whether or not I should invade all of his planets or just simply destroy them and recolonize them later. Because sending troops over is a bit of a chore, 
particularly considering I just want to walk clean over his planets because I've got to produce the troops, I've got to gather them in one point, I've got to attack all at once. And he's had a habit of, and there's not too many there, but leaving a lot of defenders on planets. So rather than, yeah, rather than sort of like capturing his planets, he's a robot anyway, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to nuke them. So my ships here, which one are they? My nukers, which have not been upgraded for some extremely weird reason. Did I not tell them to upgrade? I don't know. But these guys here should, when they get in range, start bombing the planet. There he goes. So he'll nuke the planet until there's no one left on it. And that's the plan. So my, the rest of my primary fleet is coming in. And we shall send them to attack in a bit. And the second fleet is almost ready as well. Ah, that's what's happened. That's right. I told them to retrofit, but then I failed to actually change the fleet design for Fleet 3. Because I believe I failed to replace... Oh, they have Tier 2 nukers, but I need Tier 3 nukers, so yeah, that's the problem. So I need to replace all of these ships with... Mark three nukers. And I could tell them to just requisition or yeah, if I tell them to requisition then that's gonna cause me a problem later. Because that will leave me with spare ships. So what I need to do is go back to the shipyard, ship lift, I need to find Mark One Nukers. I know you're bombing, never mind. Go retrofit yourself. So they should no longer be part of that fleet, but that fleet will no longer be able to bomb that planet, so I'll just use it as support for the time being. And similarly, do the same for those. Okay, so, fleet one there, fleet one is there. They finished bombing that planet anyway. So, while I'm on my way, I shall take this guy out. Now, these little um, symbols here, sorry, I'm just moving about in my chair. Um, these little symbols here are basically um, space platforms. You can arm them. However, what they're primarily used for these particular types are to create um, warp paths. So that didn't last long. As you can see on the enemy, these um, orange lines connecting his planets, they are basically a collection of those of these things here. Now, I have a skill. So is that not built yet? Possibly not. Um, I have a research, not a skill, sorry, that allows me, it's under physics, that one. There it is. Ships traveling within your own empire's borders gain 50% boat owners to their FTL speeds. So, these lines are effectively my borders and these extend my borders, which basically means I can make trade paths. So my ships get a 50% boot bo or speed bonus if they take this route around. And I am missing, oh yeah, I'm missing one here because I plan on capturing that planet once I've got terraforming up. So let me just cancel all of these. I have not been engaged in combat yet. Oh, construction ship. That will just annihilate the structures he's trying to rebuild here. This is a station. I'm, I think this thing will be armed. But it won't be armed particularly well. Yeah, their planet's armed. It's firing missiles at me. Yeah, that station's not armed. Stations are extremely large structures. And that wasn't built with anything on it or armed at all. Okay, so we shall push the attack. Hopefully he actually still has some sort of fleet left. He's third military strength. So 
only this guy has less and he's this guy up here so yeah he should have some sort of fleet somewhere let's see if we can find it and kill it are oh, you bastard this is the bane of my life i've lost planets to this hyperspace flux basically prevents your ships from entering hyperspace That guy's really getting bold. He's colonising everything in anybody's systems. But yeah, hyperspace flux basically means that these can't enter warp, which means it will take them ages to get over there. And I can't be asked to let you wait for that. Um, how long is that going to take to re finish researching? Should say in here. That's going to be a little enough. Okay, I'm going to temporarily cut the video here. And I will restart it once the hyperflate or high space flux ends, or this finishes researching. That's what it's finished researching, and then we shall have a little bit of more depth look into building a ship or designing a ship. So I will be right back. And I'm back. So hyperspace flux is finished, and my second fleet is actually just finished as well. So we shall warp the second fleet over in this direction and push him on two fronts. So these guys here have now entered warp. I think hyperspace flux has been lasting less recently since one of the, or less, or hasn't been lasting as long since one of the um, more recent patches, which is a godsend because it used to last for ages and ages. It used to take ages and ages to end. Where is his fleet? Ah, there's a couple of ships. So that's one ship there. appears to be more heavily armed, but it didn't last long either. Come on, he must have a fleet somewhere. I want a proper left battle. That's quite neat. I don't know if you noticed that, but the force of all the explosions and the attacks was pushing the ship, or pushing the station away. We'll him to the outside of that system. This system is pretty much empty, bar for that. In fact, no, we're not going to do that. We'll warp them to there. So they avoid the gravity wells, and then we'll warp them over there. I actually had an interesting event occur. Unfortunately, while the AI can tell you off for doing things, and can be very displeased for doing things, and warn you against doing things, you can't do the same to them. So this guy here tried to steal my technology, and I am not best pleased about it. But unfortunately, I can't bollock him for it either. So which fleet's going to make it there first? This one. Apparently combat has occurred here recently. Indeed it has, but there's no one there. There's just this station here, which are completely unarmed, so destroying it renders or Serves very little purpose, so we should jump down there. These guys should be, yep, about ready to warp, so they're on their way over as well. And battleship research is about to complete. I won't go over there with him. We'll take him down here. Oh, I should possibly explain how I've got this little planet over here, right on his border. I didn't take it off him. This was basically a event planet, and I acquired it via the event. I just happened to be exploring, and I saw it. And since nobody else had it, I thought I'm taking that planet. So I took the planet while I had the opportunity. And again, there's no real fleet here. Oh no, there is. Yep, there's a fleet over here. So. Let's bring this one into bear.
and there's a small fleet over here. This is potentially going to be a massacre. You've got two cruisers, two frigates against my two cruisers and... That, are they cruisers? Yeah. Two cruisers, two frigates. All the beams. Yeah, can you attack these guys here? Yeah. I did not want to send those guys over. Actually, it's probably a good job I did move them. There's a larger fleet over here. And they're following me. I guess I found their fleet. that fleet nicely locked up. Presumably you're okay as well. These guys are taking a pound. Problem is that this planet's launching missiles at me. So that's probably the majority of his fleet completely destroyed. Can't imagine he's too pleased about that. So who is at war? So they're at war now. So he's going to try and take opportunity or be opportunistic. Walk them over here. We'll take care of these. But while I'm thinking about it, we need to make sure. Let's have a look how badly my fleets are damaged. Nope, they're fairly well okay. So we shall build and the place of the lost shift in that fleet and do the same for this one. This fleet's lost a reasonable amount as well. Um, can't requisition any. That's odd. I should be able to because I corrected a error I made earlier. Ship list. Where are my nukers? Mark 3, Mark 3. They must be in process of being built, or upgraded rather. Yeah, there they are. There we go, that's most of those replaced. Now, we need to rebalance this. Need a bit more in food, we don't want it to be negative, and we also need to do eek. I'm starving my homeworld to death. That's a fucking bad idea. Look at all the population I've killed. I royally fucked that up. Oh well. They'll recover eventually. Oops. Right, I need to retreat my third fleet temporarily back to here where the rest of it's being built. 
I will reinforce my third fleet with the ships that I finished constructing, so now it's more complete. Is there actually anything in my fourth fleet? Nope. Fourth fleet is just there to be used. Basically these are the troop transports. So we have a new ship type. That doesn't look like it, I don't think. That looks like my cruiser. There we go. I can now build my capital ship. So this is basically what a unpopulated ship look, ships look like, looks like. So as you can see, it is fairly large. And you have to fill every one of these slots with something. But first things first. Uh, we need engines on this beast. So... We shall give it one large warp engine, one capital, oh, where is it? There it is, capital engine. So we'll give those one of each. Now that little lightning bolt means that they're not powered. Uh, basically there's got to be a power system somewhere nearby um, or an ability con to connect to a power conduit. So without power they're pretty much useless. Let's think about shielding. Ooh. Actually, I need to have a bridge as well, don't I? Combat Information Center. So that's going to take four by four block. So we'll put that there. Uh, let's see, power plant, main engineering. That generates a lot of power. But I believe, yeah, if it's destroyed, then it causes a massive explosion. So it will basically annihilate the ship if this gets destroyed. So we'll put main engineering there. And this little grid here basically shows me the areas the power from this reaches. So that covers a reasonable amount. So with that, let us add um, can I add combat thrusters? Yes. Let's add a couple of combat thrusters and then a couple more warp drives. So I'll add the fuel cells later in spare slots. Should I equip it with weapons now or worry about weapons later and shield it first? Yeah, I can put shielding behind it there. So we put three lasers there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. Is this ship symmetrically designed? It is. The last one wasn't, which kind of a little bit of pain. Look at all of these slots that I can put weapons and stuff in. Half of those have actually not powered though, so... Ah, damn it, these have to go internally, don't they? Main engineering. Could I put one there and one there? Yeah, I could, but they won't reach over there. I think that would kind of be overkill, having three main engineerings. That will power all of those though. And this... Generate me a massive amount of power. So let's see how many shields I can fit on. So let's put a load of shields there, I can't... Ah, damn. Need to have more shields over here as well. It's already all very well having three at the front. Shield generator there, shield generator there, shield generator there, shield generator there. All the shields. So 
See, the bigger ships require more thought in design because I need to make sure that weapons fire can't hit anywhere on this ship and that the most vital parts of the ship get power and are well protected. Hmm. Let's get some more beams. They have reasonable firing arcs, so they should be able to zoom out a bit. Can I change those? I can't change their firing arcs. I ideally want to have more focus fire. I mean, that's it's all very well spreading it out across the ship like that, but it means that the ship won't be able to fire all of its weapons straight at the target in front of it, unless the target is roughly the same size as it because the weapons won't tilt far enough. That said, I don't think these are the maximum range of the weapons, so I think that these actually will still lock on. Let's move those secondary engineering bays back. How much does main engineering cost? For its power, it is definitely more efficient than the alternatives. So if I put one there, one there. In fact, no. Let's strip this one out as well. We shall put one main engineer in here, then one main engineer in here for the sake of extra protection because they will take the ship out if they're destroyed. We shall surround them with internal bulkheads and hope it doesn't make the thing weigh too much. It might do. How heavy are those? Mass of nine. How heavy are these? Mass of nine. It's hard to say. Anyway, more shield in. So we've got three spaces here. Primarily it will be facing the target that it's trying to kill. Add extra shield generators here, give it extra defense from the side. I want to have some sort of weapons at the back as well. Hmm. This is still generating an inordinate amount of power, but it's going to be expensive as hell to build this thing. Yeah, I think I... Yeah, I think this ship is actually going to be better for using power conduits. So what power conduits are, are these things here. They allow me to extend the range
of the power systems. So if I draw this power conduit out here, then I can get it to reach these. And similarly, if I do this over here, I can reach those. Now these ones are out of range, so for those, we should just put in small nuclear reactors behind it. Oh, balls, I can't. <sighs> so much to think about. But yeah, this is basically how ship designs go. And as you can see, there's a lot to think about, and it's insanely detailed. Let me just take the um, arcs off. This is basically half constructed at the minute, and I've still got to figure out I want to get more shields on this thing, I want to extend the power conscious more. I'm basically only going to have one of these per fleet um, because they're going to, if you look down here, it's going to cost me a thousand to produce it. So that's insanely expensive. So it's a matter of balance. You, you can balance your ships the way that you want them to run, that's kind of the idea. Um, but every single slot has to be filled with something. Um, that's just an inbuilt rule into the game. So these slots here, I've got to put something in them, otherwise no empty slots there, and it won't let me save the ship for construction. So every slot has to have something in it. But the question is, what do you put in everything? And that's the decision you've got to make. But let's see, is there anything else to look at? No, it's not firing any ordnance. Warp inhibitor. That would be kind of a dickish move, but then the AI has never flee from a fight, so I don't see any reason why I'd need to use this on a attack ship. I could add a colonizer module, but that would kind of be a waste because the ship's consumed if you use it. Ordnance storage systems, but again, this isn't using ballistic weapons, so it's not needed. Fuel cells, these are the things that store power. If we look up here, you've got power capacity, and these things increase power capacity. So the higher that is, the longer these weapons can fire for, because they'll have more power to draw from. But if I can give this ship enough power, or get it generating enough power, then these weapons will be able to fire constantly, which would kind of be overkill. I'm not entirely sure exactly how much power that would need. Does it give me the information necessary to make those calculations? Power per second, 450. Power capacity, power recharge. You could, in theory, work that out. Let's see, if I remove this... Yeah, that's just general power trade. Yeah, power. So that's power to be online, that's how much it fires. So, let's work this out. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17. So if we call it 20, that's 9,000 power per second. So, how many main engineerings would I need to do that? These have... How much power? I would need a lot of main engineers to be able to pull that off. 1,600 each. So that's... Six. I would need to find a way to fit six main engineers on this ship. I'm not going to keep this design, so let's see if I can get six on this ship. One, two... Three, four, five, six. Then I've got a problem that I've not got. Ah, uh, I would need a seventh. I can fit a seventh. It'll go. And then, command, there we go. That thing will be able to permanently fire 20 of those guns. That would be insane. 
could I make a ship like that work? I mean, sure, it's got power. Costs a fortune. <laughs> if those engineering systems get hit, this ship is going bang big style. But I think that would work. I'm going to try and do that. I've been given an idea. But yes, I shall leave it there. Um, so that's basically Star Drive in a nutshell. It's got a lot of depth to it. I mean, this game was made by a single guy for the pro, or a single guy did all of the programming. So that's just insane, the amount of detail that's in here. Um, but if you like 4X games, then you should like this. Um, I mean, I enjoyed both Sword of the Stars, the original one, um, after it being patched. And um, Sins of the Solar Empire, I'm actually looking at my games collection to remind me. But prior to this, I used to play a game called Space Empires 3 which was very much a 2D game, uh, but it was turn-based and it was basically a 4X strategy game and I played that a lot. So I do like these games. But this does have the same sort of detail that Space Empires had, certainly in ship construction. And the fact that it also blends in the um, sorry, live combat that you see in um, Senses of Soul of Empire, so the world is constantly progressing. I do like that. Um, it does mean you have to think or or act more quickly, but while I'm sitting in this screen, the game in the background is paused, and that's the same for pretty much most of the screens. So if they make this a multiplayer game, excuse me, if he does make this a multiplayer game, I'm not sure how he's going to effectively work that system, but I'd be interested to in see if he could pull it off. But yeah. It's certainly, the depth is certainly, or the depth of the game is certainly worth looking into if you like this sort of thing. But I shall leave it there. Um, this game's on Steam. Um, I think it's on the other sites as well, but unfortunately I really should get a council so I deserve and gate or gate or gamers gates, good old games, those are the ones. Um, but yeah, anyway, you can pick this game up in multiple locations if you want to have a look at it. Um, I don't think there's a demo, but it's not that expensive and it's definitely worth a try. If you like 4X games, this will definitely be up your street. But that's pretty much it. So the last thing to say is thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time.